How do your family react, your mom and your dad? My dad was just happy I wasn't going to a very expensive country like the US or whatever. <laughs> so he did he, he was he was cool. Mm -hmm. he, it's just now whenever he has to pay for some for something that he's he's upset. Yeah, Ghana this, Ghana that, that, that. That's when he has something to say. But on a regular day he doesn't say anything. <laughs> Interesting. It's when it comes to the money that's when it comes to the money that's when he starts screaming. But if it's not that yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, three point five GPA, good job, my daughter. If you have an issue, say it. Like be direct. Don't be to go to the corners <laughs> asking me all this stuff. Then he starts asking me, uh, anyways, who are you talking? He said that. And I'm like, hmm. first of all, we never got this vibe. Like I told you, we never had this vibe. Like you're pretty. We never had that vibe. So where is the disrespect coming from? Whenever like I do ads, for example, I always pay back the person if they tell me, oh, I didn't get sales. No matter what, like even, even if like the video had 20,000 views, 8,000 8, views, 80,000 80, views or whatever. Because I remember there's this particular one I went all out for this girl, multiple posts, and it was like 80,000 views, 20,000, 50,000 views and all that. She came back and said, zero sales. And you gave her money back? I gave her money back. Why would he do that? Because you, you, you go on social media and come and say stories like, about, about me? No, no, no. You take your money, it's okay. It's not that serious. I didn't get a lot of love from my parents like that. So really, my take with the outside world is also very strange. So my negative experience when it comes to the nightlife in Ghana. Oh, the guys that we met last time, they're here and they offered me a drink and stuff. They're pretty cool. So I think while I'm on my date, you can go and sit with them. And when I'm done, I'll pick you up and then we go because we're supposed to go somewhere. At some point, I just see the bartender, the waitress, come back with a platter of two drinks, like orange drinks. I, I didn't order anything, so I didn't even think it was for me. Then he puts it on the table in front of me. And then he's like, here. So I'm like, what's that? Oh, just orange juice. You said you don't want to drink, right? You said you don't want to drink, so here. Okay, no problem. Pick it up. I was about to drink it, but I taste, oh, orange juice. Okay, put it back on the table, go back to my conversation. The waitress came back, like another waitress, not the same one, another waitress came back. And she's like, hi, somebody's calling you. I'm sorry, somebody's calling you. She kept saying, somebody's calling you. I'm like, nah, I'm not interested. Because usually when that happens, that means a big boy somewhere sent the waitress to call you for your attention. I don't like that stuff. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go and check because something is going on. I get up, I follow her, and that's when I see the waitress that served us. And the waitress is like, I'm very sorry to disturb you, ma'am, but this guy that just gave you the drink, when I came to your table and I handed him the drink, he put it... Hello, guys, and welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode. And as you guys already know, this is a diaspora transition episode where we have dialogue with diaspora who have relocated to the continent uh, here in Ghana. We have, conversations with, we have conversations with them. We ask them, how's your you know, experience living in Ghana or Africa being like? And uh, today we do have here someone very special, a young woman who decided to relocate to Ghana. Um, I've seen her on TikTok a lot, uh, being a content creator, doing other things here. Um, and she looks like one of the artists or something, you know, one of the influencers or actress here in Ghana. So, you know, we're about to have a dialogue, you know, to ask her how she's been, you know, living in Ghana. And one, one support at time I saw on the TikTok that she almost was, is it poisoned or, you know, dragged? when she was out and about having fun uh so she's here today she's here today to have a dialogue with her so without further ado kita welcome on the show is that thank should you. i call you that yes yes my name is kita welcome on the show thank you nice to see to be here yeah so i think the first time i saw you you were training and people were like you look like a fjord yeah. is that so i do get that a lot of times <laughs> to a point where even when i before i got to ghana yeah i heard about a fjord through that actually people kept asking me yeah. do you know you look like her do yeah. you know you look like her yeah i don't know do i yeah i mean we leave it to the audience but people might not know who you are because people just always they will know you because you, they strike a resemblance between you and a fjord but let people get to know who you are who are you introduce yourself to the people watching you for the first time Okay, hi everyone. My name is Mujikita. I am a content creator, artist, designer, and marketing strategist. So I actually started in Ghana as just a regular student. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm 
just a regular student, but then um, obviously as a youngster you always have interest in a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I was always a creative, I write, I make music, so I started writing songs for artists here and that is through that that I connected with a lot of creatives in Ghana. I got to meet a lot of you know content creators, artists and all that stuff. So that's yep. how I started. Interesting, but where are you originally from? I'm originally from Gabon. Gabon? Yeah, Gabonese, mm -hmm. full, 100%. And I was raised in the US, Houston, Texas, which is why I speak, for, I speak English pretty decently. Decent, yeah. <laughs> because I thought you were American, though. I yeah. thought the first time. I get that. Right. Yeah. All right. So how is it like? When, when did you went to Gabon, uh, America, from Gabon? Well, I went to America when I was pretty small. I think I was like, say six all the way till I was like 15, 14. That is when I left to back to my country. Mm -hmm. And when I went back to my country, I, um, I started traveling again. So I also went to Senegal. I lived in Senegal for a few years, mm -hmm. which is also where I graduated high school. Then I came to Ghana for studies and everything else. Mm -hmm. So when did you come to Ghana? I came to Ghana in 2019, first June 2019. Oh, so during the year of return? Mm -hmm. During the year of return? I guess. Uh, I didn't know that was the same period. Yeah. How did you hear about Ghana, though, if you don't mind me asking? I actually heard about Ghana through my cousin. So she studied in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in Ken UST, I think. Is Ken it the, UST. Kwame Kuma, is that the school? Yeah, in Kumasi. Okay. She was there and she finished. And so I always knew I wanted to go back to an English speaking country. I didn't want to go to France. She gave me a few options, and I think Ghana was the number one for me. Interesting. All right, so how was, your, how was it the first time you touched down in Ghana? How was it like? Well, the first time I came, I was with my cousin, so it was, it was okay. She introduced me to Accra Mall and the Ubers and kind of the different mm -hmm. lives. It's very different from Gabon because we don't have most of that. We, we don't how is Gabon Uber. like? Yeah, pretty slow. It's a pretty country, but it's pretty slow when it comes to technology and, and all that good stuff. It's mm. pretty slow. Yeah. Very slow. Yeah, most people don't have bank accounts to the point where you can get like, I don't know, Apple Music or Spotify. We don't have that. Really? Yeah. What's like the population of the country? Two million. Two, Two million. million. Also, it's a small place. Yes, it is pretty small actually. Okay. Where we probably, everybody knows each other. Interesting. Almost, yeah. Okay, so is that where your parents are? Your parents in America? Yes, both my parents are currently in Gabon. My dad is the one that raised me. Mm -hmm. My mom also lives there with her family. Interesting. So 2019 you got to Ghana. How was it like then when you got here? I, I think I didn't... Okay, so when I came here I already had a mindset that I was coming here to do a great job in school. So I, honestly, I didn't discover mm -hmm. what Ghana was really about until 2021 because I was just doing school, home, school, home, school, home. So in 2021, I took a, I deferred from school and that's when I started getting jobs in like the nightlife and that's when I started learning that's what you Ghana. Yeah. Really? That's when I learned what Ghana really is about. The yeah. nightlife yep. clubbing, we'll get to that. But why, <laughs> did you, why did you defer from school? Um, financial situation. Do you, want, do you mind sharing? Yeah, I mean, I, I love my dad, but he does have some inconsistencies sometimes. So mm -hmm. even though I do a great job, I had a 3.5 GPA when I had to be fair. He couldn't afford at that, at that point, and I was kind of tired of like going to school and then at the end of the semester, you can't pay for it. So I was like, let me go and get a job or get some experience somewhere. So actually, I'm, not, I'm happy about it because now I'm into tech, which is very good. <laughs> So, yeah. You deferred in 2019, okay, the same so I year. Okay, I arrived in 2019 mm -hmm. and I deferred in 2021. 2021. So that's when I got the jobs and all that stuff. In and the then you started life. experiencing the nightlife. Same, same year, yes. Speak to me about the nightlife. For people, I mean, December is around the corner. Okay. People are coming. Yeah. Like, what did you see then? I am, um, well, December in Ghana is a totally different experience. I think December in Ghana is the best period for anyone that really wants to experience mm -hmm. Ghana, like what Ghana has to offer for foreigners, because that is when people line up events, like the best events for in December. That's when the crowd is here. That's when everything is fun in December, because everybody's here. The financial is ready, because most people prepare for December. So mm -hmm. the nightlife is interesting. I think in, before it used to be Afro-Nation period, right? Is it the same name now? 
Yeah, Afro Nation is still Afro Nation, but yeah. Afro has changed. Yeah, Afro Chella used to be Afro Chella every December, and then like during the during the week, you have the white parties at Bloom Bar. Like it's there's always something to do. Mm -hmm. There's always something. Mm -hmm. to do. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. How have your experience been like so far? Experience being in the nightlife and everything. Okay, so I think because I used to be this introvert that only read books, watched animes, played her video games. It was a big switch up for me and it showed me that I am an introvert and also an extrovert. I can really be an extrovert and I can have fun. Like mm. I can be boring but I can have fun. So I would say right now after a few years of doing it a lot of the times I'm pretty bored. Yeah. The nightlife? Yeah, I'm pretty I think I've seen everything that needs to be seen. So it's like there's nothing new that can be offered. What have you me. seen? I've seen the, the good side of it. I've seen like how you can make good friends, how you can have the best fun, but I've also seen the negative side where people can put something in your drink and you don't know what's going on. Let's speak about that experience. Yeah. What happened? So my negative experience when it comes to the nightlife in Ghana, uh, I think you remember that video I made. So the backstory pretty much is that this year I decided to focus on tech because I'm doing a course in front end development and all that. So I wanted to finish and focus on that. But then I have this one friend that knows how to drag me outside anytime. Like she knows mm -hmm. how to negotiate and get me out of my house. So that day she invited me out because she hadn't seen me in a long time. And um, I had met a guy with her. We were at Honey Sokola Laboni. And he was like, oh, you guys are cool. Come out to our birthday in a couple weeks, da 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 There were two people. I was like, okay, sure, you guys are cool. Anyways, then so when my friend, I reach, I, I meet her at the beach, which is where she was supposed to have like a date with someone. She was like, meet me at the beach. I go to the beach, she texts me. Oh, the guys that we met last time, they're here and they offered me a drink and stuff. They're pretty cool. So I think while I'm at my, on my date, you can go and sit with them. And when I'm done, I'll pick you up and then we go because mm. we're supposed to go somewhere. So I'm thinking, oh, cool. Like we get along. So no problem. Get to the place. I don't think maybe anything of it. I sit down. Everybody's cool. It was three people. So the two people that I've met before, let's call the first one Andy and the other one Eric. So Andy and <laughs> Eric are there. The toxic one will call him Andy. So Andy comes to pick me up and gets me to the table and I see someone that I did, never met before and the other guy, Eric, was there. So I'm comfortable. I brought my place, my PSP and my games. So everybody was kind of talking about, oh my God, like you're into games, this, this, this. So I'm wrapped in the conversation about being a nerd. Like I don't know what's going on at the table to, because his friend was very inter interesting. So we're talking about animes, we're talking about video games. And then they, the Eric guy is like, oh yeah, give us a drink, give us some shots. I declined because I was going to a party after. I didn't want a drink, so he insists like, no, nah, like you need to drink something. I was like, yeah, no alcohol. So the Andy guy is like, okay, you don't want to drink, that's fine. I'm like, oh yeah, they respect my boundaries. That's so cool. Like I'm used to the nightlife people being very forceful. So I appreciate when people give you your boundaries and stuff. Go back to my conversation, very distracted at some point. I just see the bartender, the waitress, come back with a platter of two drinks, like orange drinks. I, I didn't order anything, so I didn't even think it was for me. But then he puts it on the table in front of me, and then he's like, here. So I'm like, what's that? Oh, just orange juice. You said you don't want to drink, right? You said you don't want to drink, so here. Okay, no problem. Pick it up. I was about to drink it, but I taste, oh, orange juice. Okay, put it back on the table, go back to my conversation. At some point, I talk, I talk, I talk, and I pick up the drink again as, as if I'm about to drink. I didn't even have time to drink it. The waitress came back, like another waitress, not the same one, another waitress came back, and she's like, hi, somebody's calling you, I'm sorry, somebody's calling you. The thing with me is I'm not very self-aware a, a lot of the time, so I d it took her a while for, for her to get me. She kept saying, somebody's calling. I'm like, nah, I'm not interested. Because usually when that happens, that means a big boy somewhere sent the waitress to call you for your attention. I don't like that stuff. So she kept insisting. I'm like, yeah, something is going on. And while she kept getting uh, insisting, the guy was getting upset. Mm. He was like, she said no. She said no. She said no. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go and check because something is going on. I get up, I follow her, and that's when I see the waitress that served us. And the waitress is like, um, 
I'm very sorry to disturb you, ma'am, but this guy that just gave you the drink, when I came to your table and I handed him the drink, he put it in his hand and then he put something out of his pocket, he put it in your drink and he gave it to you. I don't know what it is, I have no clue, but I have a bad feeling. And she was trembling and crying and like, the, her whole reaction is what scared me off, if anything. So I didn't want to make a scene. So what I did in the moment, I was like, Okay, let me get all the information that I need. So I asked them for consent if I could record what they said. The girl panicked. She was like, I don't want trouble with this, this, this. The security guys came outside talking about it. Like, nah, like, we need to do something about this guy. He can't be here. That's when the guy comes out because I was taking a long time. So he came outside. Hey, what are you doing outside? Like, why are you taking so long? And he, he puts his hand over my shoulder like he's grabbing me back inside. I said, do not touch me. Don't you dare touch me. And I think that's the moment that he realized that I knew and everybody knew so he ran away so he ran away so that's what happened I went to my friend I called my friend at she was on the, uh, at Alora Beach she came with her dates they even went to see what was going on inside but the guy had left at mm. some point so I went back to say thank you to the ladies for saving me you never know what would have happened but that was quite a, a traumatizing experience after going out for three years that never happened to me and the one time I go back and I'm pretty cool with someone, it happens to me. You never know. What do you think it was? Was it a poison, something to make you I think that yourself? this guy, I think that this guy is a serious drug addict. Mm. Well, that's what I think. Because even the first day we met, he kept talking about drugs. Like he kept talking about drugs, 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 drugs. And I was like, I don't do <laughs> all that stuff. Like I, I take my cute cocktail and I go home, you know. He was like, oh, okay. So I think that day he wanted me to dry something that he does mm. without necessarily telling me. Mm. But his friends were like, were not okay with it because even his friends now they're falling off. And actually, he's left Ghana. He left. Yes, he did. Interesting. He's left. Oh, Ghana. so you still you still keep an eye on him? No, no, no. Because when the incident happened, like everybody was calling me. Everybody, his friend, the other one, because they didn't want to be associated with that. Like, they knew that by the moment I knew what happened with the guy, I was going to put them all in it. So they cleared themselves first. They reached mm. out to me and they told me, like, nah, like, we even went to talk to his dad. Apparently his dad is, like, some serious, you know, these Arab guys, Arab dads that don't play. Like, mm. apparently his dad is like that. So they brought him to his dad. He got a beating and his dad sent him back to his country. Interesting. What country is that? I think he's, he told me that he was from Cyprus. That's what he told me. Okay. That he was from oh, this is a white guy. Yeah. These are some Lebanese, you know, the Lebanese guys oh, that yeah. stay in Ghana and stuff. Mm -hmm. They were at Honeysuckle. They said hi. Oh, you're invited to my birthday. That's. Oh, yeah. Like because that. I'm curious. Is it like just foreigners or Ghanaians? You've had experience with Ghanaians I've themselves? I've never had experience like that with Ghanaians or Nigerians. I meet a lot of foreigners here. A lot of my friends are foreigners, actually. A lot of them, but I've never had that experience. Some of them, most of them are even from the US, the UK. Never, never. had that experience. So this is actually very strange that it's coming from someone that I, you know, I wouldn't even expect it to come from, Interesting. from him. Interesting. Yeah. But you said you also had positive experiences in the nightlife. What are some of the things? You Look, you're a young woman, you're pretty. Yes. Um, obviously, men out there would like to get your attention. How is the nightlife? Paint a picture of you having a great time. How are people reacting to you in Accra, Ghana? Okay, so when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about having a positive experience, a good time, it's mostly bec uh, when I refer mostly to when I'm going out with my friends mm -hmm. because that's when I have the most, the best times. Because I can't have fun unless I feel secured. And usually I feel secure when I'm surrounded by my people. Because, for example, whenever I go out with my friends, I know I don't have to look behind my back. That's so you feel relaxed? In my drink. Yeah. But in Ghana in general, Anywhere you go, you meet somebody that's cool. And especially now that I create content, I receive such praise every time I go somewhere. People are like, oh yeah, I love your content. Just last week, Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. I went to Garage very quickly to say hi to my friend. And it was Tidal Rave there. And everybody was like, oh yeah, I love your content. Like that type of energy is very, very uplifting for me. So yeah, that's what I mostly refer to. Like the girls being pretty friendly and kind mm -hmm. in the club and also, Let's not take it for granted that these girls that saved me, that's a good positive experience mm -hmm. for me. So mm -hmm. that's why I was. But you don't have men hating on you. I do. I, I, I have that a lot. Let's talk about that. <laughs> let's talk about men hating on you. And are these Ghanaian men? Um, Mostly. Let's talk about it. So the thing with me that most people, 
do appreciate and most don't is that I am very strict with my boundaries. I used to be that people pleaser person that would give out money to be friends with people, that would, you know, violate her own boundaries just to be friends with people and all that. And I had to check myself because things kept happening to me and my sister just guided me like, this is not it. You need to have boundaries. You need to self, you know, being a good person is, is not about just saying yes, 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 yes. Because then you'll meet people that will actually go out of their way to make your life hell. So my issue with men usually is that either they think they can touch me without asking, without my consent, because maybe I dressed nice or whatever. That's usually what I get in the clubs especially. Or they will move to me and if I don't reciprocate or if I'm friendly or if I politely decline, it turns into like disrespect. And I get that quite a lot from here I, I've never had that from like and I don't want to say it's specific to Ghanaian men because I don't think that's true rejection like men that can't re accept rejection is everywhere but obviously I live here so my experience is just based on Ghana men particularly and I would say I've had that experience too many times I think I've done a story time recently I think maybe you have seen it where I spoke about an influencer that talk to me about it yeah. I've not seen it so there's an influencer that mm -hmm. um, to this day, I personally do not want anything to do with the person because they, the person is basically like someone that doesn't uh, see your value unless you have something going on for yourself. Mm. Like if you have a lot of followers or if you're trending or mm. this, this, this. They won't, he won't give you the respect as a human being first. Mm. I'm the opposite way. No matter if you create content or whatever, you get a high. You get a, oh, hey, nice to meet you or whatever. We don't have to be best friends. So on that, on this personality wise we are opposites and so the first time I met this person I met him at Kruna and when I met him at Kruna I confused him as another influencer that I thought he looked like and I was like oh are you da -da -da -da? he didn't say he wasn't the person he just like yeah what's your name this 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 I like your boots and da -da -da. I was like yeah I like your drip too let's be friends we exchange contacts never linked up or anything like we just see each other's statuses on whatsapp then uh, he starts obviously trying to be friendly, like, oh, what's your what's uh, your snap? After a while, like, what's your snap? This, 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 this. I'm like, cool, but it's not flirty. It's just friendly vibes, right? I just want to make this clear from the beginning because you will be confused after a while. Then at some point, uh, I went out with my friend uh, for some drinks, and that night he posted on his Snapchat that he was around the neighborhood, and I was like, oh, I'm around the neighborhood as well. He's like, okay, let's link. We link, uh, and when we link, the person that I thought was him was there. And that's when the person reveals what type of person he is, because as soon as me and my friend get to, to the location, first impression, first reaction from this guy is like, oh, nice to see you again. And it's this. Oh, he's, he's looking at you from your toe yes, up? Yes. Really? And he's not hiding it. So. I peep and I'm like, mm, okay, let me not say anything. We get inside, when we get inside, he introduces us like, oh yeah, this is my homegirl, Kita, this is her friend, da 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 da. And the person that I thought was him, we'll call him Andrew. Let's mm. call him Andrew. So Andrew is here and let's call the guy Eric again. Mm -hmm. Let's call Andrew and Eric. So Eric brings us there, introduces us like, oh, this is my homegirl, Kita, this is her friend, da 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 da. The Andrew guy passes, and I'm like, oh shit, he's here, I know you, no problem. I go back to the bathroom, refresh myself, come outside, and suddenly, the same person that brought us inside decided that he won't talk to us at all. Like, imagine I bring you somewhere, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, t I tell you to sit there and I don't entertain you, you want drinks or anything, I don't do anything. So you have obviously to now socialize with the people that are there, mm -hmm. on your own. He sat in a, a sofa, isolated and left us there so i start mingling me and my friends start mingling with the andrew guy issue 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 man what issue happened oh my god well the guy and i start talking we played mortal kombat everything was cool my friends my friend had a good time she had to leave right so at some point him and his friend left and then they came back after a while so i kept texting him like yo where, where did you go you left me da, da, da. when they came back He's like, I'm here, but then he doesn't come to sit next to me. 
So the Andrew guy comes back to sit exactly where he was. He was sitting next to me. He sits next to me, and now he's like, oh, what are you listening to? So then we start talking about my music, and he's like, oh, I love your music. Like, you're so talented. Wow. Like, da -da -da -da. compliment my music. At some point, we kept talking, 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 and the guy had an issue. He was in the back, just staring, mad, upset, or whatever. So when we get... When this is an influencer. Yes, this is an influencer. St stares in the back, doesn't say anything, hasn't spoken to me or whatever at all. Doesn't even sit next to me to engage at any point. So at some point, I text him again, like, where are you? He's like, I'm, oh, I'm here. I look back, I see him. Five minutes later, I continue talking to his friend. Five minutes later, he's like, oh, I'm leaving home. I'm leaving. So I'm like, ah, you brought me here. I can't stay here. So I'm like, you know what? Let me go. His friend is like, can I get your Snapchat? I act like I don't hear because you know how guys are. So I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Even though I know it was always friendly vibes, I don't want the drama. So let me not. I think I didn't hear. I pack up my stuff. Oh, let's exchange his contact. Then he took my phone and put his contact in it himself. This and is the Andre this, guy. Yeah, okay. Andre guy. All this in front of the Eric guy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Eric guy is giving me some eyes, obviously. Mm -hmm. We leave the house, we leave the, the location. When we get outside, that's when this guy showed me exactly who he is. What did he do? Oh, he starts asking, he starts by first question. So that girl you brought, who is she to you? Um, my friend, are you sure? Yeah, why are you thinking otherwise? Oh no, I'm just asking. I'm like, oh, maybe you're interested in her. She's cool, like she's cool. He's like, oh, so you want, to, you want to plug me with her so you can, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, don't worry. We get to the car and he's like, yeah, I'm going to drop you somewhere close to your house, but I'm not going to drop you all the way to your house. I'm like, no problem, no problem. We get to the car and then he starts asking me, um, so why did you wear that? First question he asked me when we were in the car, privacy of his car, why did you wear that? What are you talking about? I mean, last time when I met you, you know, you had boots and a nice dress and you were wearing this nice stuff like... Why did you wear this today? I really want you to see what I was wearing so that, you, so that you don't think I'm tripping. Like I didn't go like dress anyhow. I had a hoodie on and a cargo pants. That's it. That's it. Maybe some Crocs, but that's it. But reminder, I went to have a drink with my friend before I, 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 we linked with him. So it wasn't like I got ready to come and see you or whatever. But yeah. After a while, then when he asked me that question, I'm like, yeah, guy is disrespectful. He's starting to bring disrespect, so let me, let me not even talk. Let me wait for me to get to my house and stuff. But he didn't want to give me space for anything. After he asked me that, he's like, are you happy now? I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, are you happy now that you've met the person of your dreams, the person that you wanted to meet? I be, I be you confused him with me last time, right? So now you met him, now you can talk, you guys exchange numbers. So I turn slowly and I'm like, is that what this is all about? Because if that's the situation, you could just let me know, you know, like, you don't have to be shady and like leave me and whatever. He's like, nah, like, I don't have an issue. It's just, it's just what? Then I check him, I'm like, it's just what? If you have an issue, say it, like, be direct. Don't be to go to the corners <laughs> asking me all this stuff. Then he starts asking me, uh, anyways, who are you fucking? Yes. He said that. Is. Who are you fucking? And I'm like, hmm. first of all, we never got this vibe. Like I told you, we never had this vibe. Like you're pretty. We never had that vibe. So where is the disrespect coming from? I'm like, nobody will stop lying. Like he pretends like I'm such a sex fiend. Like stop, stop, stop lying. Like stop lying. Like you, you, you can't, it can't be true. So I'm like, have you ever heard of celibacy? He's like, yeah, but I don't believe. And I'm like, well, you asked me a question and I've answered. I'm, I'm celibate. That's your answer. Oh, okay. So would you be down for sometimes coming to my... <laughs> Which part of celibacy did you understand? <sighs> <laughs> so after that, mm -hmm. I just got that my Uber was there. Mm -hmm. So then my Uber was there. Got down my, the car, went home and blocked the number. Mm. But guess what? I forgot my AirPods. In his car? At the house. Which house? His friend's house. Mm. So I had to unblock the number again and try to mediate and be polite small mm. to get my stuff back. Then he showed me that he didn't care. He didn't even respond at all. He pretended like, because 
at that point when I checked him, that's when he realized, oh, she's not that type, like, you can disrespect and do anyhow. So he was, in, in that moment, he was like, yeah, let me give her. So I never got my reports back, but it's fine, I bought another one. Interesting. This is very, and this is an influencer. This is so like, the oh, Eric, very popular influencer. The Eric is an influencer, and the Andrew is also yes. an influencer. Yes. What more niche? I can't say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't say. This is enough gist for today. But yeah, but, um, most likely uh, the way this person carries himself, mm -hmm. and that is my advice for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, treat people with respect regardless of they have 5,000 followers 10,000 followers 100,000 followers at the time I did not care about TikTok but I was trending I was on post Ghana I was on post Nigeria I think that is why he gave me the time of the day but now I can do a lot of things I just don't put my mind to it like because I'm not that passionate about content creation like that I wasn't now I am and now people are like last time we went we went like uh we went out for my friend's birthday. He was there. After I posted my video too. Very interesting, right? Mm. After I posted the video talking about him, he was there. All of a sudden, this guy is so nice. So nice. Like, oh, it's so lovely to see you. Good time. Oh, long time. Oh, this, this, this. We're buying Burger Boys. He's, and the girl is like, oh, sorry, are you, are you Kita online? Create content, this, this, this. He's now chatting with me. Like, oh, how are you? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> this, this, this. Like, what's up, bro? You know what's up. You know I don't like you. Because you know, like, the whole... Because all this stuff happened in 2023. Any 2023 or 2023? 2023. Mm -hmm. This whole year, last year to now, every time he saw me, never said hi. Me too. I see him. I don't say hi. So why is it that today? Because you are trending. Why? Mm. That's what I'm saying. People need to match the energy. Mm -hmm. If you don't like somebody, you don't like somebody. The thing with me is, I will, you always know that I don't like with you because I will always match the energy. There's no faking. No faking. For what? And he starts touching me, like touching my. Why are you touching my. In front of your girlfriend. Oh, he has a girlfriend. And his girl was there now. That night he came with someone. So his girl was there. He kept touching my face, touching my face. Like, why? Mm. You know that's not a vibe, love. And even his girlfriend apologized for him. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, hey, I. It's okay. Interesting. No, 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 Charlie. This person here, you, 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 even when he sees this video, you'll know. I yeah. hope you enjoy the video. That's all. Interesting. Is he tall? I won't say. What. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say. I won't say. He knows himself. That's all. But one thing that I think we all love or we appreciate is your story time on, me, mm. on your, on your TikTok. Yeah. You really share everything, just that you give names to the I characters. To myself, yeah. yeah which I think is still respect to privacy mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, five years in Ghana is a lot of experiences. Uh, what would you say to, look, some, man, some young woman in America might be watching this video, and let's speak about what you're doing for living first and how you're able to sustain yourself in Ghana, mm -hmm. and then we'll go to the next topic. Okay, so I am very mm -hmm. good at marketing. So mm -hmm. the thing with me is, like I said, I. I have a background in writing, mm -hmm. so ever since I was a kid, I wrote stories online, I posted on the internet and all that good stuff, and that's actually I got my first job here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Like my boss read my stories online, he was like, yeah, you can be a copywriter. So mm -hmm. I, just, I became a copywriter for an advertising company called Incel Communications. I was the, a copywriter there and a designer there as well. And now I am mostly doing strategy, so I help people grow their accounts on TikTok and on social media in general, I give people like ex uh, campaign ideas and, and all that good stuff. So Interesting. But so that's what you do for work. That's what I do for And that's work. how you Strategy. sustain yourself. Yes. And it's a Ghanaian company. Uh, most, of, most of my clients are Ghanaian okay. businesses. Yes. Okay. So that's how you sustain yourself. Yes. Absolutely. Would you say it's, it's been worth it, like doing that? Yes, marketing, I mean, marketing, uh, the thing with marketing is that's where every company spends the money. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's, it's worth your time because people that, want that, people that have businesses will want to go to people that they know, know what they're doing online, specifically with digital marketing. Like, 
if as soon as you have some, a, little, a little level of, of respect in the field, you will get opportunities. So my advice for people that have a, you know, a background in marketing or someone that is interested in marketing at all is you need to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. The first thing is me, even as a content creator, I didn't start and people immediately knew me. I started very small. I had 600 followers and I started like whenever I did my shopping, the thing with me is I, I buy a lot of stuff every, every week. So I bought some stuff and I would review it online. Like that's something I see Americans do all the time. Like, so I was like, yeah, let me review it. Nobody paid me, but let me do it just for the fun of it. At some point, I started doing negative reviews as well. And then my negative reviews started trending. So obviously the hair CT situation, the lash situation. And then that's when people started getting to know me and like liking my character. Because a lot of people liked me because I gave Pepper to hair CT, whatever. I don't think it was Pepper. It was just holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> what? Hair, hair CT. What is that? Oh, you've no, you don't, you haven't heard. So there's this uh, company that it's called Hair City. They have, I bought uh, two weeks from them, mm -hmm. I think in the beginning of March, 2024. And by three weeks after like a few, the first wash or something, the wig was balding. And mm -hmm. that in like, literally that wig was like 2,500 CDs. And that was the most expensive wig that I've ever bought here in Ghana because usually my plugs are cheaper than that. But I was like, oh, let me go all out for this because I always, I always wanted a curly burgundy wig, this, this, this. Not even a week. And then when I text these people, they tell me that, yeah, what, what conditioner did you use? What brush did you use? What this, this? whole time, the day I posted the video on TikTok, yeah, the full conversation, conversation was just, oh, me too. Oh, me too. Oh, these ones again. Ah, every year. So it's like every year it's someone giving bad reviews about this company. So I didn't know because it was my first time buying from them. So when I post, that's when people start tagging this in other influencer, Mami AC. And she had made a video talking about them before. So it became a whole thing. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Wow. But I mean, look, it, are you now taking content creation seriously? Like seeing yourself becoming an influencer influencer i do see myself becoming an influencer seriously mm -hmm. i just think that um i personally know myself and i know that i need a lot of support like because first of all i do a lot of things i have a lot of interest i know how to draw i know how to make makeup i know how to do lashes hair i know how to do a lot of things i have a business like so many things going on for me and i make music so you, you don't know like it's too much so Sometimes focusing on just one particular thing, I need to have a hand with me because mm. if I have to do everything by myself, it's a bit discouraging and content creation is not easy, you know, mm -hmm. it's not easy at all. I got to learn that very, very, very quickly. Like as much as it's easy for me to sometimes trend or like whatever, I don't think it's something that is easy to do, like post a video every week, post three videos a week. Nah. Mm -hmm. You need you need to have a team you need to have someone behind you at least a manager that is there to uplift you like oh don't be discouraged this is good this is fine you need to do this plug you with the right people the right age. sometimes i see these influencers in ghana getting in these opportunities i have no clue how to get that so that's usually what yeah makes me just like yeah let me focus on things that are paying me right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. but you've not monetized your TikTok yet i have monetized it uh, i've started this year actually i started this year but the thing is i don't think i'm doing it right really because whenever like i do ads for example i always pay back the person if they tell me oh i didn't get sales no matter what like even even if like the video had twenty thousand views eight eight thousand views 80,000 80, views or whatever, because I remember there's this particular one. I, I went all out for this girl, multiple posts, and it was like 80,000 views, 20,000, 50,000 views and all that. She came back and said, zero sales. And you gave her money back? I gave her money back. Why would he do that? Because you, you, you go on social media and come and say stories like, about, about me? Hey, no, no, no. Mm. You, you take your money. It's okay. It's not that serious. Interesting. Yeah, so that's what I'm having a hard time she with. She thought about right. that her products is not good, that's why she... Is, is she I mean, you know what, I don't even, I don't even, I, I, I was a bit disappointed and it also discouraged me from doing ads more. So after that, I stopped doing ads for a while. Then someone came back again and I was like, insisting, kept texting me every, every month. Okay, let me take that small thing, let mm -hmm. me do it for you. I did it, did decent views, 
came back and told me she didn't get sales again. Mm. What if they are lying to you? That's the thing. I know they are lying. You can't tell me after 80,000 views you don't have if they sell. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, if that's the case, I feel you take your money, but I know. It's just like, it's not that, that's, that's really why I'm paying them back. It's not that deep for me. It's not that deep for me. I don't want you to now say, see me on the internet and think, oh, I gave this girl my, my money and this, this. I don't, I don't want mm. the energy. Because you want your name to be I want my claim. name, okay. I want my peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel when I go to sleep that I, feel I did somebody wrong or they feel like I did somebody wrong mm -hmm. or whatever. Because all these businesses, to be honest, my mistake was I was taking these small businesses that wanted, you know, visibility. That's the ones that I was accepting and whatever. So I think that's why they were, they had their expectations all the way there. And so, I mean, hey, even with even with a heads up like, hey, if you don't get sales, just remember my responsibility as a content creator is to record, edit, post It's visibility, not sales. I have, I have made it clear every single time and they still do it. So. Right now I'm on my break. I'm focusing on what's paying me. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure so many people will reach out to you for Hopefully. collaborations. But one thing I want to be able to paint a picture: if people are watching you, right, seeing mm. your life on TikTok, Instagram, living your best life in Ghana, how do they react to you? People from Gabon, most especially. And then we address your American maybe friends and whatnot. Okay. The thing with Gabon is I am not very attached to the Gabonese media like that. I don't even consume Gabonese media like let's say TikTok from Gabon I don't consume it so I don't think a lot of people know me apart from that one video from Pulse Ghana when I was talking about how Gabonese people re do remixes of Ghanaian music and stuff because that one did good uh, the blogs in Gabon posted that video and the, 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 the energy was quite negative but it's, it's okay mm. it's okay so mm. regarding Gabon I don't know what they think of me but the US, my friends from the US or whatever, they're very proud. They're very, they're very interested in visiting. I convinced my brother to visit through that actually last year. He came, he enjoyed Ghana, he thinks of coming back. So a lot of people are surprised whenever I talk about my experience in Ghana. Most people, honestly, specifically Gabonese people, we have this negative views of majority of West Africa and it's mostly due to ignorance. I'm not gonna lie to you because like, for example, Senegal, before I even went to Senegal, like, the view that Gabonese people have of Senegal is like, oh, it's worse than Gabon, like, because basically Senegalese people usually have, like, small boutiques. They are the ones that mm -hmm. have small boutiques where you can buy groceries from in Gabon. So our mindset in Gabon is like, oh, since in our country they live like this, that means that... I when I went there, I saw the real, 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 real truth. It's not like that. So, yeah, I think the problem with Gabonese people is we need to go out. We need mm -hmm. to go out more mm -hmm. because the mentality there. It's not there. Yeah. How do your family react, your mom and your dad? My, I'm not very close to my mother, but my dad, my dad was just happy I wasn't going to a very expensive country like the U.S. or whatever. <laughs> so he, did, he, he, was, he was cool. Mm -hmm. he, it's just now. Whenever he has to pay for some for something that he's he's upset. Yeah, Ghana this, Ghana that, that, that. That's when he has something to say. But on a regular day, he doesn't say anything. <laughs> Interesting. It's when it comes to the money. That's when it comes to the money, that's when he starts screaming. But if it's not that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 3.5 GPA. Good job, my daughter. Mm -hmm. that, that's all. Interesting. <laughs> You've been here for five years. Have you dated a Ghanaian man before? Not officially. Not officially. What does that mean? So the thing with me is I was celibate for a very long time. I actually lost my V-card last year. Hmm? Yeah. I was celibate for a very, very long time. I always was that kid that was an introvert, likes anime, like the complete nerd that never got into boys. Let's speak about that. Okay, let's speak about that. Like you, you are a nerd. Yeah. You have a PSP. I do. I have a PSP. I have a 3DS, the normal one, and I have the new 3DS. I'm getting a PS4 very soon. Too. Why? I mean, the thing with me is I grew up with boys, so it doesn't, it's, it doesn't feel strange for me when a girl likes video games. And I draw very well. Like, this is my universe. The, the 3D, 2D world is, is me. Like, this is what I've been doing since I was a kid, so. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the reason why I even asked that, you said you've been celibate for a long time, right? Yeah. And you broke your virginity last, last year, year, 2023. Yeah. Uh, so you came to Ghana? 29th October 2023. 
yeah that's that's so much details but <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> you remember it of course and hey, it happened in Ghana five years yeah. it happened in Ghana yeah of course no I'm here interesting so you came to Ghana as a virgin yeah I did how old are you now 26 I turned 26, 26. in September interesting <laughs> you're shocked <laughs> I don't know why people are shocked though. There's a lot of people like that that, that just there waiting. And to be honest, I could have waited longer, but I was just like, I am struggling with dating because I don't have experience. So let me start now. That's really my, that's why. What do you mean you were struggling with dating? What happened? I don't like, the, okay, in Ghana, dating for me isn't easy because, uh, First of all, I get bored easily. Second, uh, people are not consistent most times. With me, I'm talking for me, okay? People are not consistent. So I'll meet a guy, the guy is like, oh yeah, I wanna talk. But then the first thing they say is, I don't know what I'm looking for. That one day, your friends don't immediately. Mm -hmm. The thing with me is I don't waste time. Like, you tell me that stuff, you're not serious. Go mm -hmm. on the side. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people say that they never want anything serious or like they they are still thinking about what they want in their life. To meet you, I'm in mean, the same way. So where do we go from here? Because you can't touch me and come and say the same thing. What, what, what are we talking about? You know. So that's mostly why I've never dated. I've had a lot of talking stages that never led to anything. But actual dating, like my boyfriend, my girlfriend, that happened one time. But it was a Gabonese guy. It was my first boyfriend. So even this situation wasn't a boyfriend situation that That year was in one month. <laughs> wow. It was one month. Like the guy kept like trying to be physical. I'm like, yeah, you're not trying to be my real boyfriend. You're just trying to get into my <laughs> pants. You know? So I, I sent him to the locker. It's okay. You don't regret giving the thing out? Oh no. No. That and that one was a very serious person, honestly. Really? Like, yeah. Even when I met the person, like I was like you have potential but i didn't say it to the person obviously i was just in my mind like mm, okay. interesting what when if people look at you on tiktok what is what do you think the impression what impression do you think they have of you they definitely think that i'm these baddies that's like nice body dance and can dress up and like a lot of the thing with me is like i've noticed on my tiktok i always get these comments that try to claim that i'm a Asha, oh, like these easy girls and whatever because as soon as you, put, you wear nails and you, you can take care of yourself in this Ghana there the mentality just direct goes directly that oh it's a man that's entertaining you I wish I wish that that was the case man and I've been struggling this whole time and you want to tell me that it's a man that anytime I look nice outside it's, it's a man ah wow I wish <laughs> I think your experience with Ghana has been bittersweet. It's it's fun, but it's it, it, I struggle because of my personality. Mm. Like I am strict. You have no idea. Mm. I am so strict. On a scale of one to ten, how strict are you? Nine. Nine? Yeah, uptight. Yeah. Is it? Is that helping you? That's the thing, I'm checking myself sometimes. Like whenever I have issues with people, I check myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person that doesn't take criticism. That's one that one day anybody can talk to me. Even me, I will harass you. Do you think do you think I'm like did you so I think that my situation is just that when I feel like you don't value me enough to give me the benefit of the doubt or to give me the respect that I deserve from the beginning, I don't have to say anything. You don't give me that from jump, we have nothing to talk about. Mm. Mm. Where did you because get these principles like from? Settling. Huh? Where did you get these principles from? My mother. Mm. I didn't get a lot of love from my parents like that. So really, my take with the outside world is also very strict. You understand? You didn't right? get a lot of love from your parents. I mean, I was mostly raised by my dad's sisters and brothers. He did. He himself didn't really. It's now, now, now that he's now here. But trying to be in your life. Yeah. What my happened? My parents weren't really. I mean, my dad and my mom met. Uh, when he was still a student, like uh, in, co in college and whatever, and she was also in the same, you know. So I was the first child, like, for both my parents, and they never ma got married actually. So both of them got married with different people, made their lives, and, mm. you know, I'm the kid that's like. Interesting. I was the tro troubled, fun? not the troubled kid, I would say the black sheep. Really? So you know black sheep here. Yeah. We have we always have love issues. <laughs> that one yeah, self love is so 
Yeah, that, that, I think that's my problem. I'm, I'm trying to settle my daddy and mommy issues, and uh, it has made me the strict, a strict person with myself and with people. Mm. With myself and with people. But one thing about me is I value people. Like, I value friendships. I value people that show me, like, if you, hey, if you show me you love me, yeah, I'll go all out for you. But if you like this, I mean, I won't mind you. Mm. You have nothing to talk about. There's nothing to negotiate, literally. I like that. Let's speak about Ghana a little bit. Ghana, okay. Um, five years. Mm -hmm. How is living like um, people dealing with you day to day basis? Um, even cost of living. Are you affording to live in Ghana? Okay. What's the downside? What's the upside? Well, Would you recommend to somebody? Ghana was. Is the situation in Ghana is unfortunate to me because when I came to Ghana, I remember at the time like. You know, people had so much good things to say about the government. People had so much good things to say about the government. Mm -hmm. And like, at the time, like, what's it called? My currency was very close to the currency with Ghana, actually. Like, let's say 1,000 CDs was basically equivalent to 1,000 CDs in my country. Now, if they send me 1,000 CDs in my currency, I get like 4K or 5K. Now, 1,000, your currency is 4,000 CDs right now. And this is Gabon. So meaning like your currency is even bigger than Ghana right now? Uh, yeah. Interesting. And it's, it is sad. I mean, it's good for people that have access to foreign currency currently in Ghana. I mean, that's the people that are pretty much thriving. But I was that person that was paid in Ghana CDs and that had to struggle in because I didn't get help from my dad and whatever. So I know what Ghanaians are feeling currently. So seeing the situation in, in Ghana right now, is it saddens me. And th which is why I'm mostly like promoting a lot of these re remote works and like how like a lot of my friends, I push them to get into tech because I got into tech for that particular reason. I was like, in this life, me suffering again after a childhood like mine? Nah, I'm not having it. So how has your experience been like in tech? Tech is, I wish I started earlier, you know, but uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm still finishing my course right now. But in the next, I already have like li internships lined up. I already know what I want to do. I already know where I'm going. So, you know, it's, it's easy because of that, because I prepared myself before I even got into it. I even self-taught myself co like a, a, a few coding. languages, yeah, coding languages by myself before even starting the course. So it's, it's a breeze. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. We'll see now when, whenever I have that certificate, we'll see how it works in Ghana now mm -hmm. so I can actually know what tech the, the tech world in Ghana is like, because I'm really curious. Mm -hmm. mm. Would you have ever imagined your life like how it is? No. No. Why not? I've, I'm not used to good things. I've mentioned this on my TikTok as well. I'm not used to good things. I, You're I, not used to good things. Mm. I'm used to being overlooked. I'm used to, like I told you, my parents, all this, it's all based on that. Like, I'm used to being overlooked. I'm used to having to settle, make myself smaller. TikTok came like that. People like me because of me. People don't, you know, I don't need to do much. People see me in town now, they talk to me. They're happy to see me. They want pictures, they want whatever. Like, I never imagined this to be me at any point. Even me being an artist, like, when, I'll make you listen to my music after, you'll tell me, but even me when I'm, I'm in studio sessions with some producers from Ghana or whatever, and they tell me, oh, you have talent, oh, this one there, if you put it out, this, 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 this. I have imposter sh syndrome because, again, I'm not used to uh, good things happening to me. That's, that's sad. sad. Yeah. I know. I'm working on it. I'll be fine in two mm. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like even my upbringing, I, I was a black sheep a little bit. So. Mm. I get, I get what you mean, but it, it's quite sad. I know. What would you give as an advice to someone there right now who might feel that they are the black sheep? Find someone that has the same interest as you or you relate to the same level of suffering or the same level of trauma. And trust me, that person will guide you. Mm. Like, you guys will lift each other up. I think that's what helped me. I have a best friend shout outs to you i have a best friend doesn't play about me like doesn't play about me she and i anytime i have anything going on i call her she gives me advice in life she gives me advice with boys she gives me advice even when business even today she gave me advice like every day like find someone that that has the patience and trust me when you complain about your stuff and you're hearing people give feedback, like, oh she's always complaining they're not for you 
Because mm. people who care about you won't say that. They mm. will hear your pain and they will hear your cry for help. Because that is, it's a cry for help. So find people that you relate to and walk with them. Because if you feel like the people that you're surrounded by when you're suffering or you're going through things, they're just complaining about the fact that you keep complaining, it should tell you what you need to know. You know, mm. you're, this is not your people. Mm. That's all. Have you been depressed before? Oof. Uh, this is a habitual issue for me, man. <laughs> but mm. hey, you know, when, you, when you're a happy kid, you have to be depressed sometimes. You can be happy, happy, happy every day now. Mm. <laughs> you can mm. be happy, happy every day. So mm. I do get my days where I, I deactivate my, oh, that one day, my, my Instagram followers. Before I deleted this account, they suffered. Kita, we are missing you. I come back, like, hey, 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 and then I deactivate after two weeks because I'm tired. It gives you anxiety? It, it used to give me anxiety. Now I don't have a kind account, so I'm free mind. Like, I don't care. I don't even need to look at it, but it, it used to. I'm not gonna lie. It used to. Cause, and trust me, I was an Instagram girl. Like, in, in high school, I was that Instagram girl. Like, that girl that had like a lot of followers. I had like 10K. I had a lot of likes. Like, people knew me from Instagram, this, this. Like, I had it going on for myself from, from young. Which is why growing up, I lost interest because like I've done all of it. You know what I'm saying? Like putting yourself out there, putting, being pre, having to put filter on your face every time. You can't even post yourself. But then I, I've done all of it. And I did it young, which is why I know it shouldn't, it's not good for young girls because it really, it really messes up with your self-esteem. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it, it messes up with your self-esteem. Like the whole Snapchat stuff. I remember, I remember the days. I used to need a, a, a Snapchat filter before posting a video. Even sometimes I see people post on TikTok and it's always filter filter. I'm like, yeah, you're not there yet. When you will be, you, you, you will know that this is not good for you. Interesting. Will you say that's what affected your mental health in the beginning or something else? Um, I think that the thing with me is I run away from most things. So when I lost interest on my account, I deleted it and I created a new one, which was my, my current ex uh, Instagram. I made friends there, artists follow me there, people that I met through in the nightlife follow me there, a lot of people followed me there, this, this, this. But then, I, you know, sometimes you sit down in your room, you look at the followers, you look at the people texting you, you're just like, you guys are not my people. Like, what is this, the goal of this? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just somebody that's, I'm genuine. Like, I don't know, tic -tic, Instagram is too filtered and too, yeah, it's not my vibe no more. You want to be real? I want to be real. Like, even the content that, right now I'm, I'm contemplating putting, putting content on Instagram now, but real, real now, I really want to start switching my content to just real stuff, like reels talking about things, reels that people can relate what to. What do you wish you talk about that is making you, you are thinking about? Hmm? What, is, what do you wish you would comfortably talk about that you are not talking about now? Say it. Um, I don't know. Wait, something to talk about that, I, that I'm hesitant to talk about right now? Yeah. In hmm. terms of posting on your TikTok, your Instagram, about being real. You say you want to be real. Instagram mm -hmm. is not real. Mm -hmm. What well, do you wish? What I wish to post on Instagram, mm -hmm. specifically? Mm -hmm. Or on TikTok? Whatever. Honestly, yeah, I just wish I, I want to get to a point in, with TikTok and content creation in general where I can post whatever, like, I don't need to calculate, or oh, if I post like this, it won't do enough, well, like, I can post whatever, and people can relate, and so I see this influencer, I love her a lot, her name is Amma Berlin, like, she is funny, she talks about her stuff, she does lifestyle, she does a vlog talking about her life, and whilst in the in the vlog she talks about stuff like that's the type of content that i see myself doing because it's relative it's real it's you you know what i'm saying it's not filtered and even if it is it's still your personality i want to i want my, my tiktok to be about my personality which is why now i'm like i think i should stop the story times and the gist thing because people are following me too much for gist now you know <laughs> let me stop now let me let me slow down with the gist you guys like this too much but <laughs> do you have a youtube channel I do actually, yeah. Do you post the just there too, or the no, vlogs? No, my TikTok, my content on on YouTube is very different from mm -hmm. my my content on YouTube is uh, what I've always wanted to post, um, which is uh, anything related to nerd things, so K-pop, K-drama, K-movies, uh, Japanese stuff, 
uh, you know, stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. that's What's really your YouTube what channel? Mujakita. No, no, no. Kita Mentary. I'll send it to you later. Okay. Really Interesting. Presented. If you have a, a, a message, you know, to the people watching you right now, what would that message be? It could be your fans, your crush, your family, your friends, whatever. Um, actually, first message will be for my siblings. Yeah, I am very protective of my siblings because of my trauma and stuff. So, um, you know, shout outs to you guys. You motivate me every day to, mm-hmm. you know, get, try my best to do better and become a better person and do better. So I, I'm in a position to help as much as I can. Mm -hmm. The second message will be for myself. Myself, because I never thought I was going to be getting an invitation to talk about my life and it would interest anybody ever in this life. And if you can do that in five years, not even five, because I've started content creation two years ago. So Mm -hmm. if you can do that in two years, Kita, take music seriously, because maybe that's your Mm -hmm. gold. Last one would be for girls that are suffering from trauma. Mm. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to complain. It's okay to process. As a trauma, the trauma needs to be processed for you to become a better person, for you to appreciate yourself. If you live and if you try to love and be in relationship and be in friendships while being traumatized, everything will trigger you. So work on yourself and appreciate yourself. But complain less if you can mm. and appreciate what you have right now. Mm. That's the thing. I had to learn to say thank you. I had to learn to, to be grateful for what I have right now because many times we forget what we don't have mm. because we watch everything on the internet. You see somebody else, oh, she bought 2,500 weeks. Me, I don't even have an iPhone. This, no, no, that's not how life works. Mm. Appreciate what you have right now. You have a phone, that's all. You have, a, you have, you have your own hair, that's all. Because there's people that it's not even feasible for them mm-hmm. in this world that they can have things. There's people in wars right now, so. So you gratitude. Good, yeah, mm. you, have, you have a good, appreciate that. Mm-hmm. God is with you. Mm. You're a Christian? I'm a Christian. Interesting. I'm a Christian. Are you single? Yeah, I am single. Why? Ah, <laughs> no, so is it, is it bad? You don't know it's not. So I am single right now because what, what would being in a relationship bring me, really? Mm. You know? Ever really? since I've tried, what has it brought me? Being depressed, thinking about, oh, he hit on my friend, I'm hurt. Mm-hmm. Should I be with my friend? Should I be hurt because my friend is this? Nah, I'm tired. Boys are messy. Boys are, you know, relationships are emotionally driven. I, I can't afford to be emotional right now. I have a bag to chase, you understand? Like, right now, dear, unless, unless you can be my peace, hmm. I'm not gonna talk about it. Right now, dear, anybody that wants to talk to me, it's like, they want to touch me. Why do you want to touch me? Why, why can't you be here? <laughs> me, I'm here, we talk about our interests. Why not? Eh? Why do you always need to? No, me, I don't like being touched. One thing about me, I don't like it. Mm. Like the whole, ugh. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said I'm sorry because I can see yeah. the, how you express yourself mm-hmm. yeah especially if it's uncalled for like mm-hmm. I don't like mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. interesting this, we are having a very great conversation yes we are um, if people are watching do you think it's worth it for people to visit Africa or Ghana yes of course especially Ghana um, Ghana has a lot to offer um, despite the obviously the situation currently with uh, the population being upset with how the you know the country is managed and all that and valid definitely valid I think that right now obviously there's a lot of trauma that Ghana is going through but it is a country worth visiting the culture is amazing the food is great the people are loving and friendly um, you're gonna have a good time especially if you have the money for it honestly there's plenty to spend here you know what I'm saying and for less because honestly even right now like I said the currency situation it's it's the best times for, for, for people to visit at this point you know so that's what I think what do you like the most about Ghana? What I like the most about Ghana is the opportunities that I get. The opportunities? Yeah, I don't think I would get half the opportunities that I get here if I was in my country. Mm. 
I, I don't think so. What I, about America? America. America, uh, to me, America is something that I'm going to do when I'm, I, I, I have the confidence, in, the financial confidence to support myself. I don't want to be in the U.S. and then my dad does the same thing he's doing here. Because then what do I do? You know, I won't get a boss that's like, oh, you write nice stories, let me hire you. It's not like that in the U.S. So it's not like that at all. So here you get to um, get opportunities through your talents, you know. My boss learned I can draw. The next week I was drawing for Hotel Tigo ads and all this stuff. I was drawing for the storyboard of Stone Boy and what's it called, that company? Uh, Gandur. I did the storyboard for that ad. No, it wasn't Hotel Tigo. It was Gandur and Stone Boy. I did the ad. Didn't have any experience though, but hey, you know, <laughs> thanks to Ghana. Thanks mm -hmm. to the Ghana mentality that, yeah, if you want it, you can do it. Mm. What don't you like about Ghana? What don't I like? The one thing I would say is, and this is not every Ghanaian, but the one thing I would say is I've noticed a lot of discrimination with Nigerians, a lot. So that's one thing that, I, that's the first thing I would mention actually, because a, a lot, you know, anytime I've gotten a negative something about Nigeria, it's always like a Ghanaian person saying it, you know what I'm saying? So, that's the first thing I would say. I'm not really a fan of it. I, I don't like anybody discriminating anything. Even my dad, when he says stuff about Ghana, I check him, like, you know. The next thing is, this is, again, not pertaining to everybody, but the Ghana mentality of packaging, man. Packaging, uh, rubber bag. No, like the packaging thing, like you have to package, you have to pretend, you have to be this person. Oh, settings. Is that what you mean? Yeah, settings. Okay. Ghana has a lot of that. Really? Yes. What do you like about settings? <laughs> yeah, like, it's unnecessary to me. You know, I, like again, mm -hmm. through this interview, you can tell I'm somebody that's, you, you get to me how you, you see me, you get like, nah, here it's like, you need to dress like this. If you dress like this, you can't do this. If you, if you oh, no, this is like, ah. It doesn't stress y'all, like, it doesn't stress you <laughs> to, to be doing all that for what? And the same people that you're packaging for are the same people that are not even worth it. They're not even worth it. They are pretending themselves. <laughs> they, they, they're sharing the same car coming outside, but you're, you're here pretending for what? Ah, Charlie, go get your money up. That's what you need to do. Packaging and settings is, is nonsense. Mm. Be yourself. Mm. And if you know you're not like that, own it and go work on it. If you want to become this person that you're pretending to be, go and be it. Mm -hmm. Why can't you do it? Mm -hmm. Simple. Mm. That's what I'm not a fan of. Mm. I don't like that people are pretending to be what they are not. Interesting. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Excusez-moi. Oh, nice French. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, guys, you know, Web Nation Africa now, you know, what we've dedicated our time our energy resources doing is to be able to bridge the gap between the diaspora and Africa by interviewing a lot of African Americans, diasporans in general, uh, transitioning into Africa, providing their story. You know, so you have the blueprint on what to do and what not to do. Now we want to be able to even, you know, upgrade that and do it, do it better. So we are now doing tours where we can help you literally transition. In the meantime, just we, all we want is for you to visit. Just come for a visit. We have groups. I uh, have 14 people coming to Ghana in December. I'm um, going to have a great time. We can take you to all the um, heritage places, cultural centers. Uh, we make sure that you have the best experience possible coming to Ghana, giving that soft landing, introducing you to business owners, diasporans themselves who have relocated to uh, Ghana. You know, so sign up with us. I think it will be on the screen somewhere. You want to come to Ghana. We have July, June, July, and we have December every year. You can get to join our group. Or even if you, you are you know, a brand, a company that you want to just send groups over, uh, reach out to us. We do have the logistics on ground. You don't have to do anything. We have everything figured out. Hotels, uh, transportation system, everything is covered. So reach out to us. Um, and yeah, we are almost at the end of the conversation. Uh, is there anything you want to say to the people before we sign up? I mean, you do sign up actually, because Ghana is fun. Um, but I'm very glad for this opportunity. You know, I uh, was again not expecting to. No, I saw your talent. You know, <laughs> for me, I, I've been on YouTube for 11 years. Okay. I've been behind the scenes. I started with documentaries, uh, creative common videos. So I was chopping up videos into pieces and making videos. 
and I've seen all the goodies. I've seen it from the beginning of it before Apocalypse, YouTube going down, rebuilding myself. So I've seen it all. And in this hemisphere, in Africa, there's not a lot of people who are being supported when they started their content creating you know, journey. And I feel like that's why Influenza Fest, I have an event that I do every year on the 20th. Sometimes the date changes, but every December, I bring people like yourself. I bring the biggest in the game, Kojo Sheldon, everybody, right, in the diaspora in Ghana together to be able to exchange ideas and help the upcoming ones, right? So when I saw you, I'm like, there's a talent in here. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I'm like, let me just, and I, that's when I researched and I saw that there's a whole <laughs> viral thing about you and a few other and uh, like yeah this so there's one again yeah so for you for, i think you have the talent and everybody who have the eyes can see it um sometimes it's hard with our uh, imposter syndromes because we all have some but if you're able to you know push through it i think you come out just you know fine at the Thank end you. and then everybody else will see the talents okay. that I, I saw so you. you know my pleasure my pleasure too yeah. nice meeting finally actually likewise likewise <laughs> so um Without being said, if it's your first time, YouTube said 89% of you guys watching have not subscribed to the videos. Why? What are you waiting for? You love the episode, you watch for 15 minutes, meaning you're interested, why don't you subscribe? So please, we want to be able to get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of this year. We only have three months left. Help us make this possible. Subscribe and comment down that you did. And also share to your friends and family to do the same thing. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's say bye bye to the people watching. How do they find you though? Okay, you find me on TikTok, Muje Kita, mm -hmm. and uh, YouTube is Kita Mentory. Okay. And yeah, reach out to her. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's say bye bye to the people watching. Peace. Bye, guys.